All right, so you're doing physics and it can be difficult. One of the things that makes it difficult is that you're getting puzzles. So you're learning how to solve puzzles. You're not just doing cookbook, plug in numbers into equations and getting an answer. There's a place for that, but not if you're gonna be an engineer or a physical scientist. And so maybe this will help a little bit just to go over and you can review it. It's something that you have to train, it's a skill, but it helps to have that skill kind of laid out. So let's start over here. Uh, a few quick ideas that you should keep in mind. It's problem solving and we're gonna apply it to kinematics, but then we're gonna build on this general problem solving idea. In physics, there's kind of what I call three flavors of physics problems. And you'll see this in most textbooks. There's conceptual questions that help you get clear. For example, if your velocity is zero, is your acceleration necessarily zero? No, it's not necessarily zero. And we've kind of gone on uh, into that with graphs. Now my velocity is zero and my acceleration is zero. But if my velocity is zero and I'm changing, acceleration is not zero. Conceptual questions can be tricky. Um, and sometimes harder than the, than the math. There's exercises which help you get acquainted with the relationships and, and the equations, but they're just exercises. And then there's puzzles, and that'll get you paid. So when you, pull, when you attack these puzzles, you're gonna get it, pull it all together, and you'll get a clear approach and a clear presentation because an engineering and scientist presenting your ideas is a very important part of it and needs to be worked on. Okay, so the kinematic toolboxes, if you're doing kinematics, describing motion, analyzing motion, uh, we have the kinematic definitions, which are always good. And then we've got kinematic graphs, which just reflect the motion, and those are great to analyze and look at the values and the slopes and the area between the curve and the t-axis and the curvature. Um, so there's a lot of information there. And then there's the constant acceleration equation, which is a uh, special case, right? Now, I have a colleague who, who really likes to just start with the kinematic definitions, and that can work, and that can work for you. And maybe it's a simpler uh, way of going it, but we're going to work with these constant acceleration equations and take a peek. So kinematic, the definitions, the graphs, and those constant acceleration equations we've already derived. So let's talk in general about problem solving and physics, and then I'll give you a plan, and then we'll do some problems to apply them. All right, so general problem solving and physics. Interesting that our mind uh, goes different places. We're, we're trained to think you get a question, you get a puzzle, and you look for the answer. But you can't do that really with a puzzle, right? You throw the puzzle pieces out, and I say solve it. Solve it without doing things, just get the answer. What's the picture? Oh, well, that's the picture. Oh, that's cheating. All right, what's the picture? What is it? You've got to move the pieces around. Um, and so you've got to have a method. I don't know. I don't know which, which piece do I do first. It doesn't really matter, does it? Oh, I found an edge. Let me get, I got edges. I got a corner. That's nice. You know, so I've got a, a method. Similarly, these physics problems are not designed to just parrot back the answer. If you are doing a problem and you've seen the answer, Okay, that's maybe helpful at the beginning, but you need to do a new problem. And as you do new problems and use the methods that you're learning, you need to think two key things. Not what's the answer, not what don't I know, but what do you know? What do you know? What is true without assuming, making an assumption, right, that isn't stated? What do you know? Write it down in symbols. This, I think this is a valid uh, problem solving in business as well as science and engineering. Write it down. Because as you write it down, that's effectively moving the puzzle pieces around. Draw it, sketch it. Sketch the process, use motion diagrams. and so You have to do that or else you're gonna be frustrated because you can't solve the puzzle by looking at it with your hands tied behind your back. If you're not doing that, you're looking at the puzzle with your hands tied behind. Sort it out. Oh, that's not right. You'll see what's right, what's not right, how it fits together. What do you know? That's your mantra on the back of your head. Okay. The other thing is think physics. This is not an algebra course. right? Algebra courses are great, but this isn't an algebra course. It's a very low level of physics. Now we're going beyond that. What's the physics? You need a physical intuition. What is a force? How strong a force? What is acceleration? Okay, so think physics, and that takes training. So as we go through new chapters, new topics, you expand your awareness of physics. 
Okay, now we're expanding our awareness of motion. And then we're going to go into force and mass, often not defined well. Develop a physical intuition. Develop an intuition for how much is a lot and how much is a little for each different concept. And visualize. If you push yourself to do that, you'll be able to draw the pictures better. And all of a sudden, you'll be able to solve, oh, it's a new puzzle. I've never done this puzzle before. Great. Move the pieces around like you know how, and you know you can do it. Right? And often, by the way, this is where you get your points on an exam. You may not get the answer, but you've laid it out nicely. So let's see how you can do that as a guide. Um, this is a pretty good guide. So let's go over here, a powerful technique for doing physics problems. I have a six-step method. Uh, people have various uh, things like this, so uh, however you like to do it. But I think that if you follow this, it will train your awareness and your problem-solving efficiency. You'll be quick and you'll, you'll bring out subtleties and you go, wait a minute, that's not right, and it'll challenge you in a focused way. First thing to do with a problem we're going to do is quickly read the problem. Don't write it down. I just said to write it not now. Quickly read it. Visualize the process. Get a sense of what's going on. Not all the details, right? So get a sense. Second, this is where the physics is done. At least in my class, this is most of the point for an exam, right? So what you want to do is slowly read it and translate what the problem says. That takes a lot of physical intuition. What is being said? And once you do that, that is moving the puzzle pieces around. So you're translating those words into symbols and pictures. And the more you push yourself to do that, because anything that's fuzzy is going to bite you. Okay, so be clear, symbols and pictures. And you'll move on, and then you'll go back and go, oh, wait a minute, I missed that. Okay, and that process, you'll get better and better and better instead of randomly going through each chapter separately and trying to get through and survive. Um, so as you read, how do you translate from words to symbols and pictures? Well, I, I think of it in two, uh, two parts. One is, you, and this is a little bit redundant, but that redundancy helps you catch mistakes. So number one, visualize and sketch the process with motion diagrams. This moment is important, and then this moment, and then this happens, and then this happens. Um, so key states, and I would label them one, two, three, and so on, personally. You could start at zero if you want. I and F for initial and final leads to a lot of confusion. It's a very common notation. People do it, and I'd like to get rid of that because you that are learning it suffer from that kind of notation. It leads to little confusion. Some people, they don't get confused, but a lot of people do. So if you just go, okay, moment one, and then moment two, and moment three, whenever it's interesting, then you're good. Coordinate choice. Which way is positive? Whichever way you choose. That way can be positive. That way can be positive. That can be positive. That can be positive. That can be positive. Then the other way is always negative. So choose it. In fact, more advanced work in engineering, physics, physical sciences, um, you learn to choose good coordinates, maybe rectangular, maybe polar, maybe spherical, maybe cylindrical, that make the conceptualizing easier, that make the mathematical encoding easier, and maybe the programming easier too. So this is a very important thing. And here it's just, you know, just say if that's plus x, then write plus x. If down is plus y, then write plus y, whatever it is. But make sure you make that note. Because as you start moving the puzzle pieces around, you'll forget it. And then variables. Where is delta x from 1 to 3? Uh, where is the velocity 3? You know, what state? Uh, what is this separation? So labeling that, I find, really brings you into a strong clarity. And it puts you into a correction cycle um, that your TA or professor or friend can uh, go, hey, wait a minute, that's not, that's not that. You correct it and you move on. Otherwise, it's, again, it's random and seems frankly hopeless and, and becomes hopeless. Many people drop out. You don't need to. You do this uh, diligently, you're going to progress. Visualize and sketch. Show the key states, like a motion diagram. Show what, which way you choose is positive, what coordinates you're using. Show all the variables on that picture. As you do that, you might want to make a list where you gather and sort the data. So data is critical. I like to put it into three categories. 
one, what's straight up given? You know, uh, the velocity is 33.0 meters per second at this particular time, fine. Um, so whatever is given. Then, and use right good notation with, with subscripts, right? At what state? V3, V4, V1, um, delta x from 1 to 2, delta x from 1 to 3, delta x from 2 to 3. Use good notation. It's going to be really helpful. It's going to avoid those mistakes that are costly. I, implied. What's implied in the wording? For example, if you say object A is pass passing object B. So here I've got object A and it's passing object B. Implied in that wording is at that moment, it's a moment, not an interval, so passing you think of as a process, you catch up, you, you are caught up, and then you pass. So that's a tricky word, and I find uh, it's a really good question. What does passing mean? At the moment of passing, they're in the same place, but who's traveling faster? And so you know at that moment, VA, maybe uh, state, I'm going to say 2, is faster than VB. Otherwise, it wouldn't be passing it. VB at the same moment of time, the same state. OK? Uh, at the top, what do you know? What does the top tell you? Starting from rest, coming to rest, whatever. Uh, there's a variety of words that have hidden information. And if you don't have those pieces of the puzzle, the puzzle doesn't come together. What are you looking for? Make a list. What do you want? OK? And the methods will bridge the gap from what you're given, what's implied in the wording. You're given it, but tricky, hidden, to what you want. Okay, so have that clear, and if you make this, again, you're going to train your thinking to realize that one word or phrase can carry a lot of information. Okay, so that's, this is the heart of it, right there. Now what do you do? Well, you want to bridge the gap. You want your methods. So you need to choose general methods that apply. Okay, and uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And write those methods in general. Write the general form. The net force causes mass to accelerate, uh, or the constant acceleration equations in our, in our case. In fact, in, in physics, there's really four uh, foundation ideas. I call them kinematics analysis, which we're working on now. There's force analysis, which has to do with Newton's laws, forces, and we'll talk about mass. Then there's momentum analysis and energy analysis. Those are the keys to so much of physical science, let alone physics. So um, you're going to choose. And later on, we're going to combine kinematics with force, or force and energy, or momentum and energy commonly. Uh, so you can combine it. Just be clear what's good and useful. General method. Just go, OK, hmm, yeah, this is this kind of problem. I want to do kinematics. I haven't learned the other one, so I'm going to do kinematics now. Then fit those general methods and take them one by one, fit the general method to the specifics of the puzzle at hand. Now, put in your information into that. You're translating these words into information clearly laid out, process, applying methods. You don't have to invent new methods. That would be a little un, uh, extreme, unfair. Put these into the general methods with careful notation so you don't mess up. Right? And now you've got equations that fit the process at hand. And what do you do then? Then you solve. Only now do you do the math. So a, a lower level introductory student will look, for the, look at the question and try to jump all the way down here without doing all this, which is where the physics happens. Solve. When you get an answer, assess it. Do the results make physical sense? Think about it. Are the units correct? Is the precision correct or roughly correct if you're not being too picky, depending? And is there anything that you know is correct, but it's surprising? Sometimes results are counterintuitive and we retrain our intuition. So maybe you've done going through the cycle and you saw part A, and now you've got to solve part B. Maybe there's something in there you can use. So again, it's, it's not. Uh, a cookbook here, but it is a good guide, and what you do is just simply repeat as needed, and you will be a powerful problem solver 
both in your classes and hopefully in your career, this kind of thinking will guide you when you get stuck and you go, wait a minute, what do I know? What do you mean by that word? What's going on? Happens all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, let's apply it.